Welcome back to Surger Tiff Clips. Today I'm going to show you the belt loop binder and this is really a fun little attachment for your serger because it's not just for belt loops. I have found a zillion other things to do with it and in an upcoming serger tip clip I'm going to show you one of the projects. But in the meantime if you want to see some of them check out my Pinterest board Surge Outside the Seams. Let me show you some of the basics that you'll need for this technique and then we'll go to the machine and actually do it. I have the components that we'll be using today set up. And for my machine, the Baby Lock Ovation, I have two different width belt loop binders, a three quarter inch, which is the one that I'll be demonstrating today, and there is a one and a half inch. On the packaging, it gives you very specific widths to cut your fabric strips for each one. For the three quarter inch one, they ask that you cut your strip seven eighths of an inch wide, but I'll give you a little variation on that and show you why. And for the one and a half inch, the binding strip should be cut one and five eighths inches. So here are the guide fixing screws to attach it to the cover hem table on your machine. Here are fabric strips. Here's one that's finished and tweezers. You'll need those and you'll see why. You'll also want to make sure that you cut your starting end in a little arrow or a little point to make it easier to feed through the machine. And you'll want to cut some test strips as well because you'll need to center your um, stitching. And if you hit it right the first time, that's great, but usually I don't. I'm usually a little too far to the left or the right. And if you get it centered on your test strips, you'll be all set to go on your actual pieces. So, and you'll want to cut them longer than you want because as you can see, it's a little bit hard to see on these, but the beginning and ends can always be a little bit irregular. They can always um, widen out just a little bit as they um, finish feeding through the binder. So you'll want to cut them plenty long so that you have enough to cut off that end strip. I'll get to the machine and I'll see you over there. First, let's talk about my machine setup. I'm in the cover stitch mode and I'm set up for the narrow cover stitch. I have my center and right needles in and that's variable. If you wanted a wider stitch, you could use the left and right needles. Uh, I guess you could even use a triple cover stitch if you wanted to, but because I'm using the three quarter inch belt loop binder and it makes a narrow um, binding strip, I thought that the narrow cover stitch worked well. I put my clear foot on just for um, good visuals for you to be able to see the fabric feeding under the foot. Again, you could use your standard foot. You could also use the cover chain stitch foot if you wanted. And I am set up with my stitch length on about 2.5. I have a heavier weight thread in my chain looper. That's a jean stitch thread. But again, if you wanted to use all serger cone thread, perfectly fine as well. Let's show you how to set up the belt loop binder and attach it to the machine. You can see on the cover hem table, I have, there are two holes in it. And I'm going to align this on it. And because I am using the narrow cover stitch, I'm going to try to center the belt loop binder between the indicator ridges for those needles. And uh, it's kind of an educated guess in the beginning. The proof is when you actually do the stitching. And you're going to put in both of your guide fixing screws because if you don't and you only have one in, it kind of allows the, um, the belt loop binder to torque or twist a little bit on it. So you want to make sure it's stable with both of those screws in. And you may need to adjust it. I usually always do. As I said before, if I get it right and the stitching is centered the first time, it's kind of a miracle. It's not anything that you're doing wrong or that you're not good at it. It's just a matter of tweaking it to get it to look good. So I mentioned cutting that little point, the little arrow in the beginning, and I use my tweezers to sort of ooch along the fabric. And now I cut this just a hair wider than seven eighths of an inch. And again, I'm going to show you a variation on why. 
you know from other tip clips that you always start not only with your fabric under the foot but also under the needle so you're going to pull that fabric forward with your tweezers and get it under the needle sink your needles now i can already see my stitching is going to be too far to the right it's not centered so the rule of thumb is that if your stitching is too far to the right move the binder a little to the right if it's too far to the left move the binder a little bit and it's a very small adjustment so i'm going to loosen those fixing screws and move this over just to start and i usually cut multiple strips on the side of my machine i have three more strips to test this so that i make sure it looks great on the actual finished product now i didn't bother moving this because um, the fabric will move slightly over to the right as i start stitching i'm going to sink my needles i think i need it well it's a little bit hard to tell but I'll start stitching and I like to cut a nice long strip of light colored fabric for a sample and that way I can see exactly where the stitching is and if it needs a little bit of tweaking so I'm going to start I usually keep my finger right on top of it the belt loop binder will fold the fabric under so that it meets underneath and I'll flip it over and you'll see what it looks like uh, when I finish the strip but it folds it under so you, I just like to kind of keep my finger on top of it just to make sure that the fabric stays nice and flat and doesn't do anything unusual while it's going through. And I think I need to just move that a hair more to the right. So I just loosened those screws. The tiniest fraction of an inch makes a difference. So I'll keep stitching along and since this is just sample fabric and a sample strip it doesn't really make any difference if the stitching isn't uniform all the way I think I went a scooch too far now I'm too far to the left but this is good for you to see so let me try this again and I think I'm I think I'm pretty close And I'll stitch right off of that and I will cut my stitching and let me just show you what happens when you're too far to the right or the left this is great you can see it did not catch it when I was too far to the left the stitching wasn't grabbing that right fold on the fabric so you could see it up here I was actually pretty close there and I was close at the end too so I'm going to run another test strip through and then when we're all set up and I've got it perfect I'll show you the little variation now I've recentered my needles something that I um, forgot to mention to start with is that you want to place your fabric in the belt loop binder right side up and you want to always keep it in between the guides right at the beginning of the attachment so let's see if we catch both edges on this one the needles are centered and so is the stitching here's the top side here's the underside and you don't see those raw edges they're caught under that chain looper so, and you can see that the stitches are heavier on the side because of that jean stitch thread. Now, this is just a lightweight cotton, but if I wanted to use this for a bracelet, it would be kind of flimsy. It would be kind of flimsy for a lot of different things. So, what am I going to use to stabilize it and give it just a little more heft? Well, for the three-quarter inch belt loop binder, I love three-eighths of an inch wide grain ribbon or other ribbon also that's nice and stable nothing with any stretch and I put this in just for fun just to show you so what I'm going to do is and you want to cut your ribbon considerably longer than your piece so that you can trim it off in the beginning and end but what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed that through this will not fold at all because it's very narrow but I'm going to bring that up and get it under my needles 
And then I like to use my needles like a third hand. I like to anchor it. I'll lower those needles just to hold it because now I have to feed the fabric in. And what's going to happen is that the fabric is going to fold around this and this is going to act like an interfacing. And it's just a really cool little trick to do. So I hold on to my ribbon back here just so it doesn't scrunch up and scoot forward. And I pull my fabric along and it's a little bit trickier, but it's not super hard. And you'll get better as you go along with it. And I'm going to bring it up and you can see how already it's starting to fold over the ribbon. Now, because my ribbon is already under the needles, I don't have to pull my fabric as far forward because the needles already have some fabric to stitch into. So I've got that all set up. I'm going to lower my presser foot and I like to stitch fairly slowly. You could tell that in the beginning when I was doing my samples. I like to just make sure I have control of everything. But you can kind of see with the clear foot, let me raise it one more time. You can see how, let me grab my pointer. You can see how the fabric encases and wraps around that ribbon very nicely. And one other thing, if you're using a lightweight fabric or a light color fabric, choose a ribbon that's not going to show through unless you want that to be part of the design detail. So again, just put my foot down and I'm going to begin stitching and I'll stitch slowly. I'm coming down to the home stretch and you can see there's more grosgrain ribbon than the fabric to wrap around it. But um, let me just finish this off. And you can continue stitching right onto the ribbon. cut it and then you can just trim it off right to the end and this is why I like to have the strip a little bit longer number one you've got that point that you want to clip off but you can see how when the fabric starts feeding through there can always be a little bit of irregularity so um, if you factor that in and you cut it off you can have a nice uniform looking strip I mentioned that the packaging tells you to cut the fabric to seven eighths of an inch. But when you're wrapping around another fabric, you really want to test that. I cut this strip to be one inch wide, just an eighth inch wider than they recommend. And that's just for the turn of cloth so that it covers in the back and you can see it does. So again, depending on the fabric itself and what you're wrapping around, Test that and don't feel as though you can only cut it to exactly what the packaging says. You don't want to cut it too, too wide because then it will do all sorts of wonky little things as it goes through the, um, the binder. It may wrinkle and fold and do a few things. So again, you'll want to test it. But for this one, I cut the fabric one inch wide rather than seven eighths wide and it wrapped around perfectly. So. What can you do with this when you're done? Tune into the next tip clip and I'll show you how to do a bracelet. But there are many other things as well. You can add these, you can create belt loops. You can see that for pants or jeans for whatever you're using it for. But you can do purse handles with the wider one, even with the narrower one if you wanted to join them together. Or if you're just doing a little small clutch, how cute is that for a handle? For this and other cool ways to use the cover stitch, check out my Craftsy class, Cover Stitch Basics and Beyond. And for 50% off, go to gailpatrice.com and click on the 50% off link. Thanks. Thanks for joining me today for the belt loop binder. And in an upcoming tip clip, don't forget, I'll be showing you how to make a bracelet. I've had a lot of people um, look at my Pinterest board, search outside the seams, and they've been asking about that. So I decided I'd do a tip clip on it. And if you want a preview of a coming attraction, check out that board. Thanks for joining me today. See you soon.